Note the disclaimer, and remember that my Patreon supporters got to see preview images, work in progress shots, and high resolution images of the completed figure. If you want to join them, the link is right below. I've also lost a couple of patrons this month, so it'd be really cool if I got some more, so yes, please support me on Patreon, I really could use the help. Hello out there, this is Wake Angel 2001 coming at you with a commission for Switch. Who well, I just realized his username is probably going to throw off the search algorithms because people are probably going to be looking about this when they search for stuff about the video game console by Nintendo. But hey, it's not my fault he chose that as his username. He wanted Garchomp. Yeah, one of the most epic Pokemon to ever exist. Okay, so uh, full disclosure, um, I kind of fell out of Pokemon when I was a teenager with Generation 3. Um, there were some personal reasons about like me com just having completed the Pokedex before the game was announced, but then like when I saw the Pokemon from Pokemon Generation 3, I... I didn't like the way most of them looked. Now don't get me wrong, there are some gems in, po in Generation 3, like the starters for that generation look really cool, and it is the generation that gave us Gardevoir, which is actually probably my favorite right now. But um, yeah, for the most part, uh, Generation 3 was more misses than hits. But then Generation 4 came out, and, um, and I didn't actually get back into Pokemon until Generation 7, but looking back over all the Pokedexes from all the previous generations, I could see that by Gen 4, they were coming up with some masterful designs. And like, like Generation 4 has pretty much the highest hit-to-miss ratio of all the Pokemon designs I've ever seen. And Garchomp is easily one of the top 5 awesomest Pokemon from that generation, and possibly of all time. I mean, it's basically a hammerhead shark that can swim through land and fly, plus it's a dragon. This is, perhaps, the most legitimately terrifying Pokemon design that I've ever seen. This will never not be awesome. And I get to make a toy of him, so let's go down to this. Alright, so we gotta start with the base figure, which is gonna be Mewtwo. Uh, Tomy's Mewtwo, to be specific. It has a decent amount of articulation, a very similar body frame, except for having a thinner neck. And, um, well, since it's made by Tomy, it's actually easy to acquire, as opposed to, like, say, the figure art Mewtwo, which would be hugely expensive. Um, plus, it's actually quite easy to dismantle. Um, a lot of Mewtwo is, is made out of ball joints, which come apart pretty easily. The only, the only thing I couldn't really take apart were the knees and the shoulders, but I was still able to work around those, so everything was fine. Um... I was actually surprised how relatively little sculpting went into the, into Mewtwo, especially the legs, as all I had to do was give him big old three clawed toes for Garchomp's feet and a couple of big spikes on the thighs. Uh, you know, Garchomp's entire body kind of looks like a giant mouth if you look at the right way. Um, as as for the arms, I just had to cut Mewtwo's hands off and sculpt the little the little claws that Garchomp has. And then for the body, I just had to sculpt over Mewtwo's pecs and add a couple of uh, arm teeth. Uh, yeah, good, a good rotation allows you to see the arm teeth uh, for what they what they are. Like, like, geez, this thing has teeth on its arms. You know, I have heard that some sharks did indeed have tooth-like protrusions on their fins, so that's actually a real science fact, isn't it? Um... As for the fins, uh, the ones that go on the arms and on the back, I decided to go the craft foam route with those because they are very long, thin structures. Making something like that look smooth enough when molded is difficult enough, and uh, and then they would be prone to snapping, which, you know, with the flexibility of craft foam, you just don't have to worry about that. Garchomp's color scheme is also simple and elegant. And it kind of fits in with the whole I am a giant living mouth kind of theme they have going for it. As he's all blues and reds and just a hint of yellow with uh, bony white for the teeth and claws. Which, you know, it's just, it's just a good design, you know. 
Um, as for modifying the main trunk of the body, uh, this is where I almost killed myself as um, as I was cutting off most of Mewtwo's tail. Uh, the cutting disc on my Gemmel tool exploded, sending shards of uh, of whatever the cutting discs are made out of flying all over the place. Uh, one one piece of which wasn't discovered until the next day on the other side of the room, so I can only imagine how much force it was launched with. Um, after cutting off Mewtwo's tail, I just sculpted on the tip of Garchomp's, which is his little shark fin tail. Although it kind of looks a little bit like an earthworm the way I had to sculpt it, but whatever. Um, and then a quick little paint job it reveals more of the more of the red, which again has a mouth thing. And uh, at this point, I had actually assembled the whole body. Now you might be wondering, um, why have I only been showing the body? Well. That's kind of because this one time I decided to do the figure in reverse, because like, I knew that there would be a lot more detailing I'd have to put into the head than the rest of the figure, so the body was actually completed before I really put any extra work into the head, so this is how it was. But just keep in mind, I actually completed this figure in about 3 or 4 days, so it's not like it took me forever, but let's get to that head so you can see what I did here. Okay, this is where my customizer's eye came in, because as I was turning Mewtwo's head over my hands, I realized that it was actually almost the right shape to be Garchomp's head straight off the bat, and wouldn't really need that much sculpting. So here's the process. First, I cut into Mewtwo's face, like... Um, from his mouth to just below his eye ridge, as you can see, and uh, and I cut into that to be Garchomp's open mouth. I then cut off his ears, but I didn't discard the ears. No, I used the ears as an anchoring point. I reattached them to the sides of his head to be the fin of the hammerhead shark motif that he has going on. Uh, I also sculpted over the beak and, um, you know, like put on a whole bunch of uh, things to keep everything in place. Now I know this looks a little noobish, but I just needed to wait for this to harden before I could put on the extra layers. Yeah, like uh, Mewtwo's ears aren't actually visible anymore. They were just there to provide a skeleton and basic shape to support the, the whole uh, construction in itself. Uh, once all this was done and everything was, was done, you can see that the eyes are actually already in the perfect place. It's actually quite amazing how, how that kind of works out. Makes me wonder if it has something to do with the... Um, with the character designer, perhaps the same person that designed Mewtwo, designed Garchomp. Uh, I don't really know. It's not like a, it's not like I have a list of of every artist who designed which Pokemon. Although I, now that I mention it, I I'm, I have no doubt that such a list probably exists somewhere. <clears throat> uh, so with all the hammerhead protrusions made, um, the second part was to paint it. Uh, you know, he's all he's all mostly blue with the black sclera. And that uh, upside down star shaped, uh, I'm not sure if it's like supposed to be a callus or a scar that this thing develops from burrowing through land. But it does serve the purpose of breaking up Garchomp's face so it's not just a massive sea of blue. Okay, now as for the teeth, yeah, you were all wondering how I was making a toothless Garchomp. Um, I, I wanted to wait until everything was painted first because the teeth had to be nice and stark white so that they contrast. Um, each one of them is a tiny triangle I cut out of craft foam and individually glued in place in, into his jaw. Um, on each half, there's three teeth on the bottom and two on the top. So that is the basic dentition of a Garchomp. And um, yeah, with the head completed, uh, can, it's kind of hard to see the eyes from the profile because the way hammerhead shark heads are shaped. But, uh, you know, like... Um, this is kind of like a monster version of Sidon now that I think about it. But enough about uh, handsome hammerhead shark princes versus scary dragon hammerhead shark things. Let's take a look at the completed toy. And there he is! Uh, so cool! Well, okay, the, the neck is a little bit skinny because it's still Mewtwo's neck, and Garchomp doesn't really have such a thin neck compared to, you know, because he's a shark and sharks don't really have necks. But. Um, leaving it like this actually makes the figure a lot more poseable because um, Mewtwo has a really good neck ball joint that makes the head super expressive. And it was a toss up, like do I thicken the neck and sacrifice most of the head's articulation or do I leave it as is so that I can actually have him do cool stuff like swimming and looking menacingly over his shoulder. I chose to keep... I chose to keep the point of articulation as free as possible. And um, when he's posed up properly, he can 
definitely looks um, gen surprisingly menacing, especially if you're looking at him in such an angle that you don't see the thin neck. But holy crap, I really do think that this is an awesome Pokemon, and I can only hope that you guys uh, think that I got the, the that I got the figure to capture that sense of menace that a massive hammerhead shark dragon can give you. All right, so uh, Switch does want me to make another Pokemon, so we'll be looking forward to that soon. But uh, until my next custom, this is Wake Angel 2001 signing off.